Daniel, thank you so much for joining me. If you don't mind giving everyone a little bit of introduction of, of who you are, what you do, and, and we can just dive into things from there. Uh, I'm Daniel. I um, do a few different things. I like to, uh, I, got, I got a few hobbies. Most of them align with work in some way. But I, um, I, I retired from the Marine Corps in 2013, started traveling around teaching, training, law enforcement, uh, armed citizens, and, and that kind of stuff. And then that led into getting into some video and content creation, uh, which turned into getting into some marketing stuff, working on the influencer side, and then working for companies on the whatever the opposite of the influencer side is. And uh, eventually led to, I, I run marketing for gunmagwarehouse.com, buy all your magazines there. And um, I got a few little things that I, I do on the side that, um, that I, I enjoy, like uh, I, I like creative writing, uh, um, hiking when I can and when I'm close to mountains and some, out, some outdoor stuff whenever we can get outside. It's been a little rough this past year. And, um, yeah, that's kind of, you know, me in, in a nutshell. Always got to be building something, doing something, and uh, I'm trying to have as much fun as I can, as I can before I die. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously I'll link all the, the various different uh, activities that you do that, that are linkable um, within the comment or the uh, description section. But you also run, are, are you still active doing the uh, Gunfighter Cast as well? Gunfighter Cast, yes. Uh, I'm still active doing that, but it's no longer Gunfighter Cast. We rebranded it uh, under Gun Mag Warehouse. And it's now it's called the Mag Life Podcast. The Mag Life. But all okay, those old cool. episodes are still up there. Uh, actually, I've got some kind of weird issue where it only goes back to 66. I'm trying to figure out what's wrong with that. Um, so there's a there's a few hundred episodes up there, and uh, so for anybody who's into the to defense, uh, I don't get a whole lot into what what the parts of the gun are or anything. I don't get focused on equipment a whole lot. Uh, we, we talk about it every once in a while, but it's more of a um, uh, attitude, mindset, uh, training related, um, thinking, uh, self control, things like that are that are much more important than what the barrel's made of of a thing. Yeah, I I remember uh, kind of a lot of our conversations. I. I have these one liners that came from you and and one of them that sticks out in my mind is the magazine fairy i, I love your uh that there's no such thing as a magazine fairy, magazine fairy showing up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's pretty good so um just for sort of backstory just kind of draw that full image of who you are because we're going to dive into kind of what your military experience is like i know you did quite a few tours spent a ton of time over in asia um but kind of what was your upbringing like? What, where'd you grow up? Kind of what, what was life before the service for you? And then we'll dive into the service and kind of talk a little bit more after. Yeah, I lived um, just outside of uh, the city of Greensboro, North Carolina. So we have the, the Tri-City area where it's like uh, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point. So it's a, it's a big metropolitan area. You know, a lot of people in there. Um, but I lived kind of out in what we called the county. It's not quite country and it's not city. It's not suburbs. It's a little bit more country than that. And uh, I went to a little private Christian school from the time I was four years old till I graduated high school and uh, never missed a church service. You know, went many years without a TV because uh, there was a bunch of sinners on there and we don't want to do that. And couldn't play with, with <laughs> G.I. Joe because G.I. Joes were dolls and men don't play with dolls. You get the picture. So that's, I grew up very strict household uh, in, a, in a lot of ways. Um, not upset about that at all. I think uh, I got a lot of good... Uh, good qualities from that and, and develop some skills to live in that environment that, uh, that helped me later on in life, especially in the Marine Corps and after. Um, and it, uh, so it was all good. You know, parents were doing the best they could. Uh, you know, being a father now, there's some things I'm like, man, they really did a good job there. And there's some things I'm like, eh, I don't really agree with how they did that. But we were probably all that way, right? Like, but uh, uh, they were doing the absolute best they could, and, and they always meant well 100%. And uh, nothing like bad or I didn't have an abusive childhood. Well, maybe there's some crazy people out there that would say it was. To me, I would say it was. Uh, I was in a strict uh, uh, upbringing um, where people may have seen things a little bit different than other people out there, but uh, nothing, nothing uh, negative or, or abusive or anything like that. But it was um, I, I living very having extremely religious parents and very strict on a lot of things. Um, I, I I wanted to get out of that. As, as fast as I could, you know, I, I hated school. I hated, <laughs> I, except for like playing sports and, and, and phys ed, love those. Other than that, I, I hated everything about school. I hated getting up in the morning to go to school. I hated being in school. Uh, it was just, high school was just one of the most miserable times of my life. I had tons of friends from, from my school and other schools, uh, I guess popular if you would say, if you were, would, if you will. Um, 
but I but that didn't matter to me. Like I didn't I never cared about it. You know, I was friends with the jocks, the nerds, the because I, I I love nerd stuff and I I love sports and I I love girls. You know, so it's like uh, <laughs> I I didn't care who you were and I, I got along really well with with everybody, and uh, I didn't get into all those games that those things. So I was so ready to get out of there. And a lot of my friends were getting DUIs and they were you know, getting into some pills and getting into some drugs and stuff. And, um, you know, I don't talk to a lot of them anymore because I had to separate myself from them because I, I used to go home on leave and, and weekends and stuff just to go hang out with them again. And then I just, I kept seeing them deteriorate. And, uh, you know, I can't say that I was a super mature person who didn't do anything wrong because I, I, I still am as one of the biggest idiots that I know. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, I, I had to start separating myself from them. So uh, about the time I turned 17, they all made fun of me. Everybody told me that I, I couldn't make it. I was going to be digging a ditch for the rest of my life. And um, it was, there's no way I could become a Marine or whatever else. And I was 16. I went to the recruiting office, and I said, hey, look, I, I've been reading some books because I didn't have a TV a lot. Um, so uh, my dad was like, you can read military books that have a Christian leaning, you know, and then that was, uh, that's what I could read. And so I, I read a lot of those and, uh, I kept coming across these Marines, man. I didn't know what a Marine was. I had no clue. And I kept coming across them. And I'm like, man, that sounds awesome. They keep talking about recruit training and this prestige and everything. And, and like, you know, it's like first to fight and like this whole propaganda that the Marine Corps does. And I didn't even fully understand it at the time. And, uh, I was like, that sounds like the next thing that I need to do. Like, that sounds like something that I may, may, may even not be able to do, but I want to try that, you know, see if I can do it. So, I had I was so dumb. I I told the recruiters at 16, like the day after I turned 16, I drove over there, and I told them that uh, I got my driver's license. I said that's what I wanted to be an A gunner in the infantry. I just thought A gunner sounded good. I, I didn't realize it, <laughs> it was. I didn't really pick it up from the books. I kept seeing A gunner, but they were talking about assistant automatic rifleman, and I, I didn't even know that. Like you really want to be the A gunner? They just sounded like I was like the number one gunner. That's what A gunner meant to me. Like not the B gunner. Like I'm the A gunner. Like I had I'm, I'm, I was so dumb. Like I had no clue. So uh, they kind of they they didn't laugh at me. Like maybe till I left they did. Uh, and it's like no, dude, you're too young. You're 16. You can't join the Marine Corps. And um, I said, uh, well, wait a second. My mom and dad have agreed to sign for me next year. I graduate high school on May 26, and I'll be 17 years old because uh, I turned 17 on April 1st. And so a month and 26 days later, I can I can bounce, or 24 days later, I can could, I could bounce because um, it was the 24th when I graduated. And uh, they're like, okay, we can't put you in the delayed entry program because you're 16. You've got to be 17 to do that. You can't do this, but uh, I think we can you can just come to pooling meetings, you know, just come hang out. You know? And so I would come there to, to go to pooling meetings, even though I wasn't officially signed up with anything. And then when I turned 17, they sent me down to MEPS and uh, did all the sign in thing. My mom cried her eyes out, you know, and I she signed her name and everything. And I, I you know, passed the ASFAB and all that stuff you need to do. And they were trying to get me in like this electronics thing after I did ASFAB. They tried to get me in Motor T to be a mechanic. Like, oh, your ET scores are good. Your your mechanic scores are good. Like, you you should. Do it. And I'm like, mechanic scores. Like, have you ever seen me work on my truck? I had an old '86 Toyota <laughs> pickup. I need to like change the oil, and I didn't have like, how do I do this? Like, I take the radiators off, and the, I've got the head gaskets. You know, because that's the only thing I know how to do on that engine is change the head gaskets. Cause I used to blow them all the time, running it hot. Um, <laughs> But the uh, I I I, I, hate, I just I could do mechanical stuff, but I think it's the most boring thing in the world. Like I, I hate it. I, it's just not yeah. fun to me. Um, but a gunner. Yeah, a gunner <laughs> sounds awesome. That's what I want to do is be an a gunner. <laughs> so I was a moron. Still am. But the uh, so I there they I told them about because you know I'm going infantry. Like that's the only thing I want to do. I don't want to do anything else. I want to be infantry. You know, like they kept trying to talk me out of it, and uh, eventually they were like, "All right, cool, you go on infantry." And uh, uh, I was, you know, O3 open. That's the way you do it is you could be any one of the M3 MOSs. And um, I graduated high school on May 24th. And on May 26th, I arrived in a van to Paris Island, South Carolina. This 17-year-old zit-faced kid that, uh, <laughs> like, uh, I weighed 145 pounds. And, um, you know, like 5'10", 145 um, acne on my face, like, uh, had my head shaved because I was going to be ready and, uh, you know, the, that's always a great way to start that off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Marine shirt too. <laughs> Maybe. I don't even remember what I, what else I was wearing. I have no, I can't remember. Um, but I, I, I got there and holy crap. I was like, this is a different world, man. Like just immediately, uh, <laughs>